do the thing. Weedonomics. No, <laughs> I said do the thing. Like, hey <laughs> That's guys. That's going to be the title of this episode before yeah. we introduce ourselves. So I was going to say to to our guest today, because we do have some guests who are thinking about the oh, aliases. Okay, sorry, sorry. But no, do, they're thinking about introducing the Introducing ourselves. But yeah, before we get to that, I was, I was just about to say just... Uh, Ramsey and I have a threshold of like how high we can get before we become belligerent. Before so, <laughs> we become like children. The countdown is basically on. Basically, mumbling every other word. <laughs> Remember in episode twelve when Theo was here and we tried to move the mic closer to him, and he basically mumbled a bunch of nonsense. That's that's what we're gonna end up. He probably after whispered some more. ancestral stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> so this is us trying to like the countdown is on. So we're starting. This is Jean. Of course, this is. And this is Ramsey. And, and today we have a special to guest. The Hubshack. Ski. Ski. Ski is our special guest today, but we will get to him in a minute. We will ski to him in a minute. Yeah. (laughs) I would like for us, before we forget and lose track, to review this wine that neither of us knows. Mm. Neither of us. Like what? It says Bordeaux. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, that's correct. That's Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Yeah. It's a. (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's Vin de Bordeaux, which Vin, prob- Vin. Vin, which probably means yeah, wine yeah. from Bordeaux, France. Yeah, it's exactly. I mean, you, you're catching on. Good job, my good sir. Well, you know, I'm learning <laughs> from the best. And it's Raymond Huey uh, or Huet or Huet. I can't see shit, bro. It's it's H-U-E-T. U-E. 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 If an H is at the start of a word in right. French, you don't pronounce it most of the times. Right. So the, the good thing about buying French wine is that you can actually see when it's been aged. And, you can and be, this is probably true of all wines. You can feel for a but I just didn't know that they actually write the year on the wine bottle. I've never seen that before, actually. It's 2019. And I saw another one for 2016, which is like twice the price. So this one is aged from 2019. So it's now four years, I believe. So that means there's no update yet out on the Play Store. Yeah, there's no <laughs> update yet on the Play Store. And I think it says Appalachian. No, wait, wait. I don't Appalachian. Know what kind of, Appalachian. Uh, Appalachian. That means the, uh, I don't know if, if this is red wine or Sauvignon or I don't even know what Sauvignon, Sauvignon is. Sauvignon is a type or, of red wine and it's a place in France as well. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just going to be dropping a few random uh, tidbits. A little French that... Oh, not the little French. The, the big French that I know. Uh-huh. The BBF. Big, big... I mean, you practically speak French all French. day. You, it's definitely not a little. Yeah, you hear that, ladies? I speak French all day. Did you take a picture of the bottle? I did, actually. Yeah, I'm and you sent such it a over. Slake because, like, just send it over because I'd like to post it on our stories. All right. So that, you know, in the future... Unfortunately, wine has no ASMR. So the reason we're doing wine today is because uh, let's be a bit more refined today. Because the thing we had last week, the Myers rum was sh- shit. Myers rum tastes like Who is piracy <laughs> and torture <laughs> and suffering Think, on the high seas. Things you would associate like, with. Like, uh, it tastes exactly like what I imagine Jack Sparrow and company, it tastes like, whatever they were drinking, tasted like. It tastes like daggering as a man being daggered. <laughs> It doesn't feel right. It's Jamaican <laughs> rum. It it's Jamaican feel. dark rum. And uh, like the smell itself is so intoxicating. It's so Actually, yeah. uh, well, to incriminate ourselves just a little, because this is going to be the incrimination shack today. Yeah. <laughs> well, one time when we were on foreign substances, which might be illegal. Yeah. One of our friends was uh, on LSD. And uh-huh. then she smelled Maya's rum and she threw up. And she threw up. Can and you that imagine? was the first time I ever saw someone throw up on LSD. Meyer must have never taken a shower. Because <laughs> how do you, <laughs> you know? imbue that drink with so much stench? Oh my god. <laughs> like, I don't know how anybody can, can, can conceivably love rum. At least dark rum. I have At least never had a rum, rum. You know? Does anyone in the room like rum? And this, this for me Show is... of hands. One of us likes rum. Would you like to comment? Maybe she's drunk like light rum. Have you mm. drunk we, dark what, rum? Not, let me let me let me get let me get the microphone closer to you because we have one microphone. The poor kids we are. We don't have a microphone. It's hey, we should set up a, a GoFundMe. We should set up a GoFundMe. No, I mean I like it mixed with sweet drinks. Mm. I don't like rum on its own. So it has it to be a like cocktail. It it, yeah, as part of a cocktail. It yeah, should be an exactly. ingredient. It does look like an ingredient. It's like, exactly. You know, pour yeah. some rum and then a, a lot of milk to mask the taste of the rum and then you know like cook your food or whatever yeah like rum just sounds wrong like, like rum is the way yeah. sweeter <laughs> the than dark rum not necessarily sweeter but uh, light rum does it's 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 less offensive okay. the smell is milder um the alcohol volume is also slightly lower and sometimes they also flavor light rum. So like with echoes of like, I don't know, lemons or, or some fruits or something like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
But now here's the thing, because like this is an ongoing debate on our Instagram page mm. and our so TikTok Kanyagi? as well. It's like Kanyagi is a rum. Kanyagi is not a rum. I, was I gonna still say, insist on that. I was gonna say, then give an example of a white rum that you find in Kenya, typically, because I have not seen any. I could just from. literally Google it right now. You know, mm, here's the thing. You know, it's not. It's not even that um, Kanyagi. If Kanyagi were a rum, they'd literally have categorized it as that. Imagine because, if a poem started with it, "If Kanyagi was a rum." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if I was a carpenter. It's like if so Monty's a... is a rum sold in Kenya. Monty. Yeah, it Monty's. Strong. What does it look like? It sounds like Maya's wife. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, man. The house that never showered. I'm Maya's and this is my <laughs> wife, Monty. We smell like... Nice to uh, meet you, man. Expired cologne. <laughs> that was the worst Jamaican accent I've ever pulled off in my life. I don't know what expired cologne would smell like because I didn't know cologne expires. I don't know. It's like alcohol. Does alcohol expire? Uh, no, not at all. Well, what if you Some put of it? The notes die off, though. Yeah, exactly. I would imagine it's it's kind of like the way if you leave beer open for too long, it becomes bland and tasteless. Yeah. It starts tasting like your grandmother. Yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see that. You guys almost died. Uh, sorry, sorry. Okay, so um, I have seen Monty's. The <laughs> bottle looks pretty regular, but I don't see a lot of other shit being sold in Kenya. <laughs> this old monk rum, which I imagine if you didn't like, like Myers, uh, you wouldn't want to taste something that tastes like an old monk. Any other East African countries that make rum? Hmm. Ah, good question. Good question. Um, but wait, is EABL the largest brewer in uh, East Africa? I believe so. And That's why it's Kenyan, right? East Africa. Or is it a conglomerate? It's, it's, I think it has branches in all three countries, but I would have to confirm that. It's a really large company. And, you mm-hmm. know, like a lot of stuff being sold in Tanzania, being sold in Uganda, Rwanda even, yep. um, is made or bottled at an EB, EABL. Factory. But wait, Rwanda has its own, right? What was the name of the Rwandan one? <laughs> Bra Lero is like a kikuyu, a kikuyu will never survive saying that. You catch a seizure. <laughs> okay. bra, 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 mama joking, this idea up bra, bra, bra. I don't know how the, the regulations around importation of like, you know, because like I imagine uh, the Rwandan president would be very strict about n- not allowing co- too much competition into the country if there's mm-hmm. like a, a native um, bottler or brewer. Mm. But, like, if, if he's allowing, like, say, EABL drinks in, then I bet you're going to see a lot of competition between stuff that's coming from Bra Lerua and EABL, you know? <laughs> like when you say that, Bra. It's like, Bra. Bra. Yeah, that yeah. is hard, though. So, anyway, um, I feel like we've talked a lot about rum, even though this is like, like, like a, a catch-up review. review. Yeah, well. It's a catch-up review of the rum we should have reviewed last week that we decided we were never going to Wasn't there an event again. last week that was called Girls Who Wine? Yeah, about, Girls about Who Wine. Wine. They had a lot of, you know, different wine. And I'm you sure know they were someone a lot who about went to the, to, the, to the event. What was her feedback on the, on the event? Um, that she got a free bottle of bubblegum wine or something. I love women because... <laughs> when they... Sometimes, That's, that's yeah. pretty much... Yeah. You know, like tell but, me about the wine. I want to review it, <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, but so, then we can check up some facts about uh, it's wine. quite a heavy bottle. So, um, it's heavy. yeah, it's a really heavy bottle. So, like, for example, wine, as everybody might know, is made from grapes, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, um, it, 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 the reason why the, or the place where the name wine came from is because grapes are grown. On vines, yeah. or not? They're not grown on vines. They grow in, on vines, and then they grow right? in vineyards. And and therefore, the name vineyard was later bastardized to say wine because that's the thing that comes from the vineyard where okay. the grapes. Are, and some of the right? names remain like vino, or is it vino? Yeah, you said. Vineyard just means wine yard. Wine yard. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but like, wow. the, it, it could also be. Vineyard is like it's like the yard where the vines, the grape vines grow. Exactly. You see, so I mean, I mean, the exact yeah. etymology yeah. might, of course, be different. But like, I know because grape vines do grow like that. That it does have a kind of relationship with the name, and maybe that might be where the name wine comes from. Yeah. Right. Um. But then here's a cool, some cool facts. Like, mm-hmm. did you know that grapes are the most planted fruit? We should all get Eli to put some background music here for like learning. 
Yeah. So people stay awake. Dun, 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 dun. That's news music. <laughs> I mean, if Willie Paul dun, dun, managed dun, dun, dun. to dance to it, <laughs> Willie Paul is a weirdo. We can deliver facts to it. Willie you Paul know? should be called Weirdy Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Every single episode we have to make fun of Willie Paul. Maybe that's part of our section is like it's time for a Willie Paul this. <coughs> exactly. <Paul Day>. But <laughs> so um <laughs> He never fails to laugh when I say that. <laughs> so like uh, the vineyard name, by the way, did you know that comes from the Portuguese? <laughs> because a lot of Swahili words are borrowed from Portuguese. Mm, um, so as well was, as exactly was with, with an H. Yeah, and because the Bantus definitely did not have that as a root in their language originally. And there's a lot of words by the way. Do you way, think the Bantus used to make wine? What? Do you think the Bantus used to make of wine? Of course. I mean that's why we have like coconut like they make wine just from different things. Coconut wine is oh. a whole thing in the coast, right? Because like they make alcohol. But isn't that a misnomer? That's not really wine. It's more like beer. Well, I mean, it's not really like beer either because it doesn't involve malt or barley or any other kind of cereal. It's kind of like cognac. They're just in no man's land. We need to really find an African classification for these. Uh, yeah, African. maybe if you make the strict argument that wine is strictly, you know, whatever is made from grapes, then I, would, yeah, then I would concede the point. But like in terms of like whatever is called vino in the coast... You know, then if you consider it wine, then yeah, we do have our own indigenous wines or gins or whatever the, the hell, you know, Vino. category we want to put them into. What do you think they drink in hell? Probably rum. <laughs> 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 Probably rum. And I have a very good case because... But if you um, drink rum in hell, won't you be burned? Because that's like adding alcohol to your body. I, I, maybe, but then, I mean, I mean, you'd also be drunk, so the point is, just, you know, if you're gonna get fucked, might as well, you know, not have your, 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 your good senses around you. But here's the thing, the reason why I think it's probably rum, is because in Paris of the Caribbean, which is probably, like, what really popularized rum for me, mm. um, Davy Jones is supposed to be the devil, like, on his ship. Meyer. Yeah, <laughs> they just drink rum, and mm. of course, all the pirates drink rum. And since pirates are probably going to go to hell, you know, I, I imagine love they'd to, want more rum. I would love there. to interview a pirate one day. But let's get into to, let's get back to today's episode. Hey, hey, look at me, look at me. I'm the I'm captain, the captain now. now. You should use that in your next BDSM session. <laughs> look at me. Last what? Question. What do you guys think of fermented alcohol? Isn't uh, all alcohol fermented? It depends. Um, like Changa, Busa. Oh, like that. Sh- Mratina. <coughs> Muratina is different from Changa. I think Muratina is good beer. But ch- I've never tried it, but I know it's good. I think, and we've had this discussion before on Think Shack. We've had this discussion before on Think Shack. Mm. Changa, Busa, Muratina, Waragi, all of these things are traditionally brewed liquors, like African liquors. And the reason, one of the problem here is that they're not recognized officially which means you can't even industrialize their production. But they're quite legit liquors in their own sense. And we were talking about this when we were having um, the discussion about Konyagi and whether it's from Like, Konyagi is just a spirit because it does not fall neatly into any category. It's just an African spirit, right? Mm. And the, the thing is, a lot of these categories, like gin, rum, brandy, like, are defined by Western standards. So, like, for example, gin needs to have juniper berries. We don't mm. have juniper berries in Africa. Um, we l- have loquats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lagers are supposed to be, you know, made in a certain way. Cave, yeah, cave. yeah, exactly. Or um, brandy is supposed to be derived from wine, which is supposed to be made from grapes. Africans weren't doing shit with grapes back then, right? So Are we need sure like categorizations of liquor that fit African liquors. For example, Muratina is made from a fruit that I don't even think grows anywhere else in the world, yeah. right? And you, there's a certain way you have to make it. You have to only use the ones that fell to the ground, not the ones hanging from the tree. So oh, obviously, yeah. if you're going to make shit from fermented that, then it needs its own <laughs> category, you know? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So Kanyagi is made from sugarcane, um, which is why a lot of people say it's like rum. But then, you know, it's, it, it, fa- it falls short in some categories, like the alcohol content is too low, you know? And um, also, it's not aged. And uh, rums around the world, like, mostly mm. are aged, like, a minimum of one year. Kanyagi is just, you know, like, immediately bottled. So it should have its own category as well. Changa and Busa. And the thing is, if, if the government, for example, recognized this, so people can actually start brewing this in breweries and bottling it and selling it, a lot of the stigma around this stuff would disappear. And also, 
um, because it's going to pass through the Kenya Bureau of Standards, the dangerous shit is going to get filtered out if you legalize it, right? Because now people get to drink the stuff that's been, you know, produced in, with kosher ways and it's healthier. And you actually get to enjoy good changa without having to lose There's no such thing as good changa is an oxymoron. You know, they put panties in there. <laughs> they put panties that's in right there. That's right now because they're totally unregulated. They'll put anything in there. They'll put entire it, fucking fetuses, aborted But if fetuses, you think about it, the name leaves clues like changa. Sounds disgusting. Like changa. There's this, thing, there's this thing about African names that I think is low-key self-racism. Where if we hear an African name, we're like, oh my god, that's that's ugly. No, but like, like ah. I I once I once <laughs> <laughs> I once went to this place in 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 Madaraka. Uh, it's right I here you were near, Mayu. That been more <laughs> near Strathmore, right? And there are like lots of courts, right? Mm. The lots of courts with apartments and whatever, and these courts have names. So yeah. we passed by one court that was called Ramsey Court. There's actually a Ramsey Court in Madaraka. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, and yeah, it even sounds dope. It looks dope. And then right <laughs> next to it is Wetcher Court. Wetcher Court has the exact same apartments, exact same look than Ramsey Court. But nobody, every, the minute someone hears Nico Wetcher Court, Kujab, like, it's like yo, yeah. this is the ghetto. But if and you it's say right I, next to it, yeah, exactly. So and it's the same Ramsey thing. Court. I mean, Chang'e is probably a really beautiful name. Maybe it's I don't a know goddess. what the hell it means. But it anything could be, with a yeah. cannot be a goddess. N-G-A-A. It's like N'Golo Kante. N'Golo Kante? He's not beautiful. <laughs> he actually can. Yeah. Francis Ngannou. He's not beautiful. He didn't get that one. He yeah. said N'Golo Kante. I was like, he actually can. <laughs> he can take. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what if I take? So but yeah, so that's the, the thing about like, the like local liquors. I, I think... I think the, a lot of the stigma surrounding them is just the lack of regulation, and of course, the, all of the um, all of the misconceptions around it. And of course, it's uh, there's a lot of poisonous shit being made out there. Chang'e. But with regulation, you're, the good shit, the genuine shit, would you know yeah. get get more visibility. Chang'e I would love to try Chang'e though, but I'm scared for my life. Huh? Yeah. Like if anything, Martina, you drink Martina. Martina no, I hear it's <coughs> uh, fermented beer with honey. What is Martina? No, okay, I'm not gonna go into that. Because uh, I know you're high, so if I ask you, you'll probably go too deep. So here's another fact about wine, because that's what we're supposed <laughs> to be talking about <laughs> exactly, today. Exactly, my good sir. Did you know <laughs> that apparently some people have a fear of wine, and it's called enophobia? They don't like eno. Yeah, actually, it's spelled O E N O B H O B I A. That sounds like a goddess. Oenophobia. So it's and enophobia. <laughs> Okay, here's another one. To quench their thirst, people drank wine instead of water centuries ago. Wow. During that time, water wasn't clean all the time. And natural fermentation, when the wine is made, could kill germs Jesus caused Christ. by the same things that caused uh, typhoid and col- cholera. So when, when we d- back when we didn't have enough clean water, especially in Europe, mm-hmm. um, probably only in Europe, mm-hmm. um, people would drink wine instead of water whenever they wow. were thirsty. So it must have been less alcohol, okay, I imagine. I mean, I don't know, because, like, wine has, like, a wide range of alcohol percentages. Mm. Like, well, what okay. we're drinking right now is probably, like, like a 12.5 or something. Yeah. It's, uh, it doesn't show the percentage. It tells you everything about the history, but not the oh, 13%. Yeah. Mm. What I'm, are you... Was, I'm trying to open this shit, but it's not opening. Okay. I'll, I'll try to help you with that. Because um, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, Worry, so cool. not. So, I'm apart here. from the wine, we're also reviewing a lot of interesting things... What do we call the kind of thing we're reviewing? Is it weed? Is it bud? Is it... Uh, people it's, used to call it sticky. It's a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of names. Most and of I do are. not have a fucking corkscrew. But we have a guest here, Mr. Ski. <laughs> Mr. Ski. It just depends on where you are. Mm. The location. Yeah. Do you know how to uncork a wine bottle without a corkscrew? You're a Jamaican girl. I really don't know. Well, we can try and find other ways to do it. the shoe and hit it. <laughs> that is the most Flintstone sounding idea. <laughs> but I would like to try Maybe it. Maybe try scissors. Might we lose an eye? I, I don't know. Or a pencil. I what the fuck? I've, I've never actually thought about it. Ramsey, you don't have a corkscrew? I don't have a corkscrew. Uh, do you have a screw? That could work. So, wait, you actually serious about the shoe thing? Mm, yeah. Wouldn't that break the, the bottle? The last time I did that, I, I broke. Yeah. Um, I, I got a bit too excited. <laughs> like this camel here. This camel looks a bit excited. <laughs> what is that on his neck? Cork. Is that the city in the background? Why is its hump so sharp? 
Was that like the? Yeah. Oh, it's the handle. Yeah. Imagine if you had to travel everywhere with a camel. I mean, if I didn't have a bottle opener. No, you're gonna say a camel. Like, what were the chances I had at folk school? I mean, sometimes people are weird. Yeah, um, it's gonna. Be- yeah. No, I, I really don't know if it will. So, guys, we're gonna try to open a cork with a fork. Yeah, I. Oh, I nice. <laughs> well, that could Just push it in. That's Good what idea. Said. That's what That's she, what she said. said. <laughs> but what, what, does she, what does she mean as well? What else has happened? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a corkscrew, so he pushed it. <laughs> but <laughs> so many questions here. Is that a telescope? Anyways, let me pause this. We should ask some more. We're back. We should ask some of our guests. Yeah, so... Um, the so last 20 first, minutes... So first, we... we, we tried just seeing how to open it and then we found out it was a cork Wait, and then people don't know what we're talking about the wine or what okay i guess we had paused but that's the thing mm. before they know how to talk about it, like first we tried to push it in and then we tried to pull it out and then we tried to go it's deeper specify. nothing worked <laughs> until finally it went in wow. in uh in a gush of glory yeah and it was the wine cork. That was the beginning of See, the... See, now, now you ruined the joke. Because I was supposed to do the whole thing and then do that final <laughs> delivery. But you know, I was yeah. lost. I was floating, man, I tell you. <laughs> we were I trying was... to open the wine bottle and I didn't have a corkscrew. The because... French are inglorious bastards. Like, why the hell did they try... They oh. have made the process so difficult. And we don't have a corkscrew, so we tried to Google some uh, tricks on how to do it. But then this and imbecile fucking on YouTube... Scammer. I should find his name so we can insult him. <laughs> On YouTube was How like, dare you insult us like put this? A, put a fire put a to the neck of the bottle now, and the cork will get pushed out by, I don't by know, I know, the, the wine gods or, or the something. the spirits or whatever. <laughs> I don't know if you did that with editing. But now we're going to drink hot wine, Uji. So, <laughs> so whoever yeah. made... Um, what, what is Bordeaux. The name? No, this is not the name. Like, hey, What's the actual name of this thing? It's Bordeaux. No, it's going to have another name. Bordeaux is a type of wine. I really don't know. Oh, it seems like Bordeaux. It's Vin de Bordeaux. It's Bordeaux wine. It's okay. Van, Van de Bordeaux. Va. Va mm. de Bordeaux. Yeah. yeah. The French, forgive me, I've butchered your language. So I am pouring some of it into my chalice. Old John. That's a okay, And what, it has mean? bits of cork to help with the flavor in the yeah, presentation. Sure. Jesus Christ, this is, <laughs> this is incredible. So this is probably not going to be the full you, you taste should, of it. But you should show them the corks floating in there. But it smells great. Let me get a wine <coughs> a glass. Hold this. It's so funny. Are you getting a wine glass? Yeah. Yeah, then none. Sorry. <laughs> I, there's probably a cup in there. There's a glass here. There's a glass here. We can use this glass. I mean, yeah. <laughs> My house has nothing. I'm sorry. Everything's yeah, still left. Hmm? Oh, okay. So what? What? Uh huh. Oh. oh, so it's deception. It's wow. deception. Yeah, actually, it's it, the, the Bordeaux wine we are looking at, and you will have to send a picture, right? Because the picture is gonna end up. I in did the take video. a picture. Yeah, I did. Yeah, and I'm gonna post in the story. It's just like it has this huge um, hole. hole underneath it. Kind of looks like an asshole if you oh, think wow. about it. A gaping asshole. <sighs> and um, at first, I don't know we thought it that. was just because it's a fancy wine bottle. But now we learned that it's just so that they can put less wine maybe, than the bottle looks like it can maybe hold. Maybe priests who molest people will be like, we just thought it was a fancy wine bottle. It was someone's asshole. <laughs> Not someone's asshole. I mean, you said it looks like an asshole. <laughs> if A is B, then B is A. <laughs> so so priests might be like, I'm trying to get some wine. <laughs> And it's like, why did you fuck that child? It's like, I mean, I uh, thought it was a bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah, we do. Just, but then that kind of implies they tried to drink something, and, and I, I can't imagine. Actually, there's no excuse. <laughs> it, makes sense. it makes sense. It looks like an asshole because it's the bottom. <laughs> it's the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it deep, just clicked. Deep thoughts with the deep. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> deep thoughts with so the deep. So, what's your first experience of the taste? Well, I'm smelling it first. What does it smell like? You do with it before tasting anything in Nairobi. Does it smell like cork? Wink, wink. You know how to taste wine? I put it on my mouth. I mean, there's a whole science to tasting wine too, and we should probably do. It is very dry. Do that. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Very dry. It's very. uh, 
flat in a way. What do you think, For me, it Ski? It smells like child's piss. Dry, dry and quiet. Wait, 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 just a second. You said it smells like child's piss. Yeah. How do you know what that smells like? I mean, do you I know? Do you have any connection to Akeli? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, haven't you ever smelled like a child's baby's, piss? A baby's piss, you know, like like when they. I don't think I've ever like actually taken the time to savor the smell. You anymore. have no choice if you're passing by and the diapers are being changed. You're I'll gonna be a smell terrible father because if my child peed and it smelled like I don't know Bordeaux or whatever, I <laughs> you put, might drink your child. No, I, no, I will put the child outside to dry <laughs> <laughs> and ferment. And ferment. <laughs> well, yeah. let me let me taste it. It'd be a Bordeaux. <laughs> oh. um, okay, now you made me miss the taste. Let me try again. It actually has bits of cork in yeah. the taste. I think it's better to pronounce it as cork this time because mm. we don't want people to assume we're eating cork. Yes, yeah, recording. What's the difference between cork and cock? Well, so I would just be in Kenya. It's like nataka cork. You, imagine if you go to a restaurant and then the girls like nataka cork. I'm like, well, sa <laughs> kujapa <laughs> and be like, no, I'm ordering. Can't say Coke in a British accent. Coke. It's actually Coke. I mean, Coke has an O. It has like a Coke. Yeah, that's how it should be. That's but people say though. Coke. What? But yeah, Coca Cola is the same. Coca Cola. It's Coke. 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 Yeah. It's gonna Coke. be the Coke segment. Yeah, the Coke. The Coke shack. It's kind of like uh, one of those Budweiser ads. Like Coke, 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 and Coke. Coke are three different things. That's a tongue twister for the average Kenyan. Because it would say you go to a restaurant and be like, "I take a Coke." You go to the bedroom, your bedroom, you're like, Nataka Kok. And then you go to, I don't know, the wine spirit, like, Nataka The life of a Kenyan. Nataka Kok. If it's possible to just show, like, a video at this point where it's, like, just one Kenyan going into a bar is, like, Nataka Kok. And then they go to the bedroom, it's, like, Nataka Kok. And then they go to, like, I don't know, some place with bottling business, like, Nataka Kok. And I think like, that would be actually... These are, this Kenyan might sound like they're talking about the same thing, but these mm. are three different... Three different scenarios, three different, <laughs> so, three cocks, three different cocks, yeah. cocks, cocks, yeah. yeah. But anyway, oh, but let's the taste, the people. Said, so the mm-hmm. thing on a on a wine bottle is a cork, or if you're British, cork. So it's an all, and then the drink is coke, like cocaine. The drink is coke, like as in Coca Cola, because it used to contain and then cocaine. the the male chicken is cock, right? And yes, the, the male hen. the male member as well, yeah, of, is, the, of the chicken family. Yeah, exactly. And the... All right, so uh, apart from the... I was, gonna, the, the, I was the, looking the for child's something piss. clever. It just... Apart from the child's nothing. piss, what else do you taste? Said uh, no one ever. No, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I smell the child's piss, but what I taste really is... <laughs> I can't believe I asked you <laughs> if you taste the child's piss. <laughs> I smell it. I don't taste it, but I do taste some of the cork. Um, and... The child's cork. The rest of it just feels... Flat. Really sour to me. It just feels like... It's a sudden sour taste. It's a bit bitter. Is it the cork that's uh, kind of messing up the taste? Uh, let me go again for another one. Apparently, you're supposed to taste this more than once. So that's what she said. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, maybe wine is something that just grows on you. Wine no, I've had some good wine. I've taste. had some good wine. And it doesn't but have to be sweet. there's so many different types of wine. It doesn't so, like, have to be a sweet one, though. Sweet and dry and... But it doesn't have to be a sweet one. And, but and I've had some very dry wine have, that was good. We have made the major mistake that we don't even know exactly which kind of wine we just bought. I mean, this is exactly how it started. But it's supposed to be a Cabernet Sauvignon. That's it, the type of wine. That's what... Because it just says Bordeaux. On no, the, but the, I remember when we were looking through the description, it's from France. No, I Cabernet didn't buy Sauvignon. that one, though. Where you I checked and I found out that one was from Israel. And I was like, I'm not about to drink Jewish wine. <laughs> so I went to the for one from France. I have nothing against the Jews. Your just political that... opinion has gotten away. <laughs> I we just wanted no French wine because, you know, France is oh, God. A- associated with wine. I just spilled wine on myself and I'm going to look like I'm on my period or something. <laughs> you, you, you get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, okay, so this is a weird experience because, like, we didn't expect this wine to taste so But something ambiguous. that's going to taste a bit better is grapes from the ape. You know what grape yeah. ape is? I think we will do another episode where we actually become more intentional with buying wine and try to buy, like, maybe specific... But we'll buy a better one. Don't buy a sweet wine. Sweet wine gives you hangovers. Uh, but you have to drink a lot of it, though. I've heard you have to drink, like, three bottles. Who does that? Apart from someone's uncle. In order to get drunk? about that. One bottle of... I've tried sweet wine. I've finished one bottle. Okay, no. No, I've never really finished a bottle of wine by myself. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't you have to be an alcoholic to do that? Yeah, you would. People out there finish a whole yeah. bottle of wine. What are you crying over? Yeah, exactly. Did you get fired? Must have been a terrible Did your wife end up on someone else's wine cork? <laughs> <laughs> I mean that literally. 
I would like to unscrew your cork. Yeah. Allow me to use my corkscrew. <laughs> That's you a know? very confusing sexual line. I know, I know. You'll be like, wait, wait, what? What? How does that happen? Kind of like, uh, you know, the, a, a duck's dick does look like a corkscrew. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's the same same thing. So anyway, I imagine ducks, duck stuff, if go. they could talk, would use that as sexual talk. So I'd like to going back to the co- going back to <laughs> like to unscrew your cork, <laughs> if you don't mind, me lady. <laughs> Here's my corkscrew. Oh my god, it's a literal corkscrew. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I really don't know what to say. It's like, <laughs> what? So yeah, but yeah. Well, the, I, the other great we'll, we'll we'll have today to is try this again grape next ape. time. Sorry guys, that guys... was a shit wine review. <laughs> we'll I do mean, better next time. It tastes like Charles Pierce. That's funny enough. You yeah, have fun with that. Yeah, do make of that. Maybe what, compare what you it with will. will Charles Pierce. Explore if you will, whatever yeah. you want to do. Yeah. but the, we're also Our doing Kelly, grape ape. Do not watch this. <laughs> anyway, Our Kelly already watched it. <laughs> um, among other things, it's part of his search history. <laughs> he probably has a notification like an RSS feed that just notifies him when Charles Pierce pops up. Like the room. AI and shit. <laughs> like my mind's telling me no. <laughs> so we have ski here, and we were looking at different strains of the holy herb. And then I was saying, because we're reviewing wine from the grapes, there's also the grape ape. There's the grape ape, which is a particular strain. <laughs> of wheat. Today we're going to be doing Zambian copper, grape ape. Wait, when is this supposed to be four? Which one did we smoke? There's supposed to be four. I only saw three. So um, maybe a lot, of people, a lot of people in Kenya, you know, because they do this for research purposes. Of course, nobody actually smokes. <laughs> no. what? what? You know, no. it's illegal. Mm. So, um, you know, whenever you're researching stuff, you might not know about um, uh, the different strains of weed. Because, like, we don't have uh, that kind of culture here in Kenya. That's why ski is here to kind of, like... Exactly. And grape ape is a very particular uh, strain, which was propagated um, from the indica, right? Wow, indica is a really pure form of... Yeah. Isn't it So we have sativa and indica. So I understand grape ape comes from indica. Mm. The other thing about weed that people don't know is most of the strains we smoke uh people smoke a hybrid mm, yeah, they're, they're a all mix mixed indica yes, and sativa yes. so you pure. just need to know what what's the <coughs> dominant strain what's the dominant strain yeah right so like a grape ape um is supposed to have been propagated by a company known as Apothecary it was genetics. propagated by a company. A company has been making marijuana. Yeah, we, I mean, you know, in the US, which is a lot more um, uh, progressive about this than yeah, Kenya, um, uh, there are like like cannabis companies that mm. dedicate themselves, almost like labs marijuana. that dedicate themselves coming up with new strains, right? So Apothecary Genetics and Barney's Farm are the two companies that worked on this. And it crosses the Mendocino Perps, the mm-hmm. Skunk, and the Afghani. These are different um, strains, right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a cross of other strains. So it's named for its distinct grape-like smell. Mm. That's We're going to be grape exploring ape. if uh, it has yeah. that grape-like smell. But will we be able to smell the grape? I don't know. So Let's try like it, you know. But so, the idea is that it's supposed to provide very carefree relaxation, help soothe pain, stress, and anxiety. People don't know this, but cannabis is actually really good as therapy for like anxiety, and it's also a pain reliever. There's different uh, types of drugs. So there's stimulants, there's psychedelics, and then drug uh, weed happens to be a uh, depressant, it's, which yeah. means it relaxes you. And gets yeah, you exactly. And, and medical marijuana is a whole ass field. And I, I hope there will be talks in Kenya soon to at least legalize it partially for medical reasons because a lot of people are suffering from Glocal physical love. pain like chronic pain or like going through like chemotherapy for their cancer and stuff or like mental disorders you know or or, or issues like depression or anxiety and so on would actually benefit from medical marijuana right so right. we're going to take a moment to roll this actually uh let me have a quick look at what we're supposed to yeah go through Okay, we're back, and I was actually just telling Ski right now that I love his Blackberry phone. You remember when Blackberry was a big deal? He has a Blackberry. Why do you have a Blackberry? One of the widescreen Blackberries of the quarter. What are they called? The passport, yeah? Yeah, it's beautiful. You want to put it under the screen so people can actually see it? Uh, Okay, sure. It's a beautiful phone, isn't it? It's a really nice phone. It was unique. There's a YouTuber called Michael Fisher. There's this uh, section called when 
phones were fun. Back yeah. when we had the Nokia N series, which mm-hmm. went like all the way around like a camcorder or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we should go into the... T should explain the, the process. Of, this is Grape Ape. So T, what are you doing right now? What so how do you prepare um, marijuana ski? Ski. The first rule is no sticks, no seeds. Mm. No sticks. No break it down no to the layman. Sticks, Smoke no everything seeds. else. Break, yeah. break down everything You to the should layman. separate the sticks and seeds from everything else. Yes, mm. if it has seeds. And and what's that you're using to separate? Because I can see you have something. It looks like um, this didn't have seeds. A plastic representation of what I imagine uh, a, a spike trap would look like. You know, Let like when you're walking something. and you jump in, fall into a hole, and it has spikes. That's what you use to grind the weed. To grind it. Yes. This is after you've to, separated to out the like sticks this, and yes, seeds. After. Yeah. So it's kind of like a pepper grinder, right? It's kind of like what a is this pepper device? grinder. I'm curious what this it's is. a shredder. Is that what they call it? It's Futurola. So the, Futurola. here's an interesting like thing. Like Motorola, here's but Here's an for, interesting thing. Think about it. But for grinding. The rolling papers, these Futurola things, are sold in supermarkets. But marijuana is illegal. Exactly. What is the point? What is the other use? There's no other use. You can Nobody rolls tobacco. I mean, you, yeah, you, you could grind some, but well, what about the rolling, rolling papers? Rolling paper? Like, unless you're rolling your own tobacco, which is, yeah, would be kind of like, weird. Who's the Mzungu's doing this? Because why are they available at every petrol station, mm-hmm. every chemist? Mm-hmm. Think about it. Yeah. They know weed is being sold. There's a just, cartel. Just like weed, the people who like to roll their own tobacco. Mm. Yes. But are they that many? I just feel like there's a whole conspiracy. People know that people smoke. Food. Yeah, yeah, I get, I get what you're but trying to push. But they don't want to legalize yeah, it. Yeah, it makes sense though. It does make sense. Mm-hmm. So what process are we at? Let's uh, let's ski explain. Uh, so um, after you grind it and you have it, how do you roll it exactly? Because you, you just finish rolling the it. The process is tuck and roll. Mm. Tuck and roll. So you put it on the rolling paper and then you tuck and roll. Okay, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna. M- Ask you to try and do a new roll so we can see what the process of tucking and rolling actually is, right? So you've got the 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 herb, the ground stuff, mm-hmm. and then you got the rolling paper, it's and you've like got the, the little marijuana. filter thing, yeah. Yeah, so, then you can make a filter. It so makes it easier. This is how yeah. I learned how to roll rather. Okay, so you you just fold it over like that. Yeah. Uh huh. Put some very nice orchestral music in the background. Mm-hmm. Watch out for the sticky side. Mm. Watch out for the sticky yeah. side. That's the side that goes over in the end. The yeah. one that you lick. So you work some side. of the thing it? into a thing, no. and then you That's pour it said. into the. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help. And then you pour so it so in. This is one trick that people never get. So mm-hmm. what you do? You wanna slightly press, press the herb. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like plastic, try, uh, try make a cylindrical shape. Mm. Just right. Just pull it through slowly, slowly. Mold ah, it, mold yeah. It into that shape. Right. So you see, even if we move it, 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 it holds the it shape. It holds the shape. Yeah. Then you tuck and roll. Tuck and roll. So you're trying to make it as tight as possible. No, no, no. I'm That's just, what she yeah. said. Yeah. That's what he said <laughs> Wait, about see, her. Who is he? The doctor or what? Make what tight? She's using soap and shit. Bada boom, bada boom. You lick it and you're done. From River Road. What? Wow. Yeah? That was like magic. You lick it and you're done. And it's done. And it's so done. the sticky that side is, is what like finished look, out the wrapping. One member of the audience is using his phone. I want you... Look, bro. Have you ever seen it roll that fast? That was fast. <laughs> that was fast. That was like less than a minute. I think it comes like the experience as well. He's so probably... He can probably do it in his sleep. Video. You know, probably when he's randomly sure twitching in his sleep, he just like rolls a quick blunt or something. You know, <laughs> he can roll in his sleep. Is you know, a, a everybody Olympic. can roll in this. Should be a rolling Olympic. So what are you looking for? You know, because they're rolling around in bed. But anyway, no, I mean like rolling. We're seeing who can roll the fastest, who yeah. can roll the fattest, who can roll the longest, who can <laughs> like the fattest joint in the shortest amount of time. And you know, there's lumberjack sports, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. All we right, can so we're cut down the tallest tree or whatever. Ape and the distinct thing is that it's supposed to have uh, a the grape, smell of grapes the smell of grape and we'll pass it all the way around so that, uh, this is a very uh, generous family yeah so, so what we're nice. doing right now is um we are looking at a video of what it's like to smoke grape ape because we would never smoke because it's illegal ladies and gentlemen don't do this do so really yeah the sm- the sm- the apparently the video we're watching says it smells like grapes <laughs> and i believe them it's very smooth <laughs> 
Yeah, it tastes that's what spiced. the video says. It tastes almost spiced. It's very interesting. Or is it the filter that's really good? Yeah. It's like a tobacco filter, right? Yeah. Oh, no wonder it's very smooth. Mmm. Very smooth to draw. Very... I think the, in, the, one of the indications you can look at to see how pure uh, marijuana is or weed right. is, is how the smoke comes out. If it comes out in a very dark cloud, it's probably impure shit. Am I correct in saying that? No. Mm. Mm, this, is, this is how I do it. If you want to tell the strength of the herb, try to take three hits first. Don't hog the blunt. <laughs> take three hits, chill, pass it around, then Hold your breath, probably. try and understand what you're feeling. Mm. 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 So like it, you're not gonna get it on the first hit, is what you're saying. You're gonna get it on the first hit, depending with how strong it is. So okay. if it hits after three puffs, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's good. some good shit. That's some good shit. Although yeah. I feel like there's some dimension missing to that definition because mm -hmm. like some of them, it's kind of like a, it's a threshold. Yeah. But you can't say this is better than this because as long as they all hit after three puffs. So I think um, there should be a category, I, I mean a category kind of, That's for... the kind of distinction, for example, that um, Leafly, for example, is mm. trying to make about these strings. It's not so much about what's better than what, but what are the smells, mm -hmm. the flavors, and every high has a distinct feeling. What kind of high are you getting from this? Is it making you hungrier than usual? Is it making you more relaxed than usual? Is it better with pain handling? Does it make you horny? Because weed actually does make some people horny. I personally have never, never experienced it, but then Yeah, I, exactly. I've heard so, of for example, for, for, for grape ape, the, 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 the main word is relaxation mm. and, and soothingness. Yeah. And that's what the high brings to it you. It might be hard to determine what, what, uh, what we're feeling exactly. because we're, You would have to try things. several different strains. On a different to, day, though. Yeah, for you to get the vibe of what each but strain But I can provides. say that was a very smooth... <laughs> it was, it like was probably the smoothest... Blunt um, uh, yeah, it's the, it's the smoothest blunt we've ever watched someone have on. It must be the filter, though. Like the, the, no, I'm talking about even the, the way you pull it. And it doesn't burn your throat. Yeah, I'm saying it was the smoothest yeah. blunt we've ever watched someone have on YouTube. No, because we're, we're smoking weed. Smoking we're, we've right. said we're taking LSD, which is a class <laughs> one. <laughs> which is a class one scheduled drug. We're taking weed. We're burning weed. It's not, oh my and God. there's no issue with that. <laughs> I mean, people know this already. We okay. put pictures on our status. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's not, let's not make it convoluted. We're smoking weed, guys. I hope so, you watch yeah. it. So, guys, we are definitely not smoking weed. John, that was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> it's opposite day. In May. So, yeah. <laughs> Moving on, simply, was there any other strain we were supposed to try? There's three more, bro. There's three oh, But yeah. we're not going to try them like quickly. We're going to discuss some topics. Oh, so that's an interesting <coughs> fact. Uh, what you should know about what you're smoking, yeah? Mm. Mm. There are basically three, three types of marijuana. Mm. So I like the accent know. with which he said that, with marijuana. Marijuana, that you feel me? Like, oh. uh, so we have sativa, we have indica, and we have oh. ruderalis. Really which reality. yes, never which people don't before. know about. Yeah. I've never heard about that. The third one. Yeah. I've never heard about it. I've heard about Sativa. It's like that third ugly sister they walk <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Like here, my daughters. It's like a weed weed. This it's is highly Sika. resilient. This is Sativa. <laughs> and what about the one hiding in the corner? Don't wait. Don't what what, what was the name again? Rosalda. Res, Res, Ruderalis. Ruderalis. Yes. Ruderalis. There's probably some girl in Kisumu City called Ruderalis. I bet you. I mean, if there's sport person, we know. And she is the bane of Kikuyus everywhere. <laughs> Ruderalis. Kisi girls also have funny names. What is, what is the funniest Kisi name you've ever heard? Ruderalis is a variety of subspecies or species of cannabis native to Central and Eastern Europe and Russia. It, there's, there's weed in Russia. I'm going to ask this to Ski because I've always been there. curious. It, it now explains, it clears a lot up for me about um, Putin. But um, he's putting in that weed, yeah? <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I have a question for Ski, mm -hmm. right? And this is a question I've always had about the, 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 the industry of weed in Kenya. Mm -hmm. oh, what, is what we're getting actually foreign stuff, is, does it come from abroad or is it just like the whole folklore? Someone has said like, I'm going to give this this name, stuff like that. I have a theory. In 2017, 2018, <coughs> people stopped getting good shashamani. People started getting a lot of shake and bush. Mm -hmm. Explain to the so, to the layman what that is. Shashamani. Shake and bush is, I guess. Shake shake is basically trim, 
and bush is weed that hasn't been taken care of uh it's just like <laughs> yo this weed just so happened to grow here as an actual weed yeah, it's an actual weed <laughs> and now you know we're just gonna smoke it right yeah it's just like there's no work done so after i came back <laughs> 2017 right yeah around 2019 <laughs> there the prices went up yeah because i guess even the regulatory environment in kenya got a little tougher or something right or well, someone is controlling the weed Never or someone know. is controlling the supply yeah, yeah. yeah. so who- I, I, believe it or not and this is a huge conspiracy theory um <coughs> you know the kind that gets you probably assassinated and shit but there are a lot of people mm. in the government that have a lot of interest in the weed economy in Kenya. And Could you want to mention a name? I know I don't I don't know any names, but like I'm gonna any like names suspected of doing so. No, so, but I'm gonna bet you there are a lot of people who actually have interest in this and they want the economy to continue low key. They would never want it legalized. They wanted to continue low key, mm, and because yeah, it's more profitable that way. Exactly. It's if you more make it, le- here's why we might never be. And legalized. so a lot of the stuff you might be buying, but actually, you know, if you the way contact leads on to contact, the origin is a guy who's probably making the laws and make it illegal in the first place. Here's an interesting thing about legalizing weed and why it might never happen. It's mm-hmm. just because, like. For the people who are profiting from it, they mm-hmm. think about it this way. If you make it legal, there'll be more competitors and it will be more widely available. So the prices will go down and then they'll have more competitors to deal Black with. Black markets always in, uh, attract large premiums. Exactly. It's the, yeah, so it's more profitable simple. for the powers that be for we to remain uh, illegal. That's why it might never, ever be legalized. I would just like to point out right now that I feel very relaxed. Yeah, and it's different because I feel like my it's eyes... It's kicking in. Yeah, your eyes are my a bit eyes droopy. Are, not droopy. Funny enough, I feel like my, my eyelids, I can feel my eyelids. You never feel your eyelids. Yeah, yeah, your eyelids are just like, you know. Yeah, you I feel can feel them. them rubbing against my eyes. Well, how do you feel, Ski? You've probably... Can you uh, guys feel them? Feel it? You know, from understanding Don't water. Don't feel anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. What about the other people? In, oh, well, nobody. I don't know if you guys want to comment. Do you have enough aliases for now? But what, how do you feel about this? You probably have. It's you're probably a, a walking weed. I can tell. I can tell it's an indica dominant strain because uh, it's a body high. Wow. Yeah, it's body more high. Of a body high and couch lock. Mm. I didn't even think you could get that it with smoking. Make you hungry, and it doesn't make you hungry. Sativa makes you hungry. Sativa makes Gives you, you hungry. more appetite, rather. Wow. Yes. So you can tell the difference even based on whether you feel hungry. We could or do something it. educated for the listeners. What? is the mechanism in weed that makes you hungry. Okay, you so the quick? dominant chemical in weed, of course, is THC, mm-hmm. as people might know already. And THC is a, cannab- is a cannabinoid. Now, cannabinoids are the class of chemicals that are found in m- marijuana, generally, cannabis, right? Mm. And they include a whole class of things. So there's, there's um, CBD or cannabidiol, um there's uh cbl or something like i used to write about this stuff right and some of these provide the relaxing effects but but thc is the one that makes you high it's the unique particular cannabinoid in cannabis that makes you high now in your so body, body has cannabinoid receptors. Yes. yes. Yeah. Cannabinoid. In your body, you have mm. something known as the endocannabinoid system, where like your body has certain classes of receptors mm. that communicate with. Um, uh, I don't know whether to call them neurochemicals or uh, hormones or whatever, but I think they're more like neurochemicals because um, it's connected to the nervous system. And, and, and when these neurochemicals attach to the receptors in the endocannabinoid system, your body gets communication on vital things like you should eat now, mm. you should sleep now, you should fuck now, you know, like a so lot of like bodily functions, right? Hormones. So the, and the cannabinoids in marijuana mimic the neurochemicals in the body and cause those same reactions even though you might have just eaten a huge meal two hours ago, but suddenly you have the munchies. I have a question. A button is being pressed by an imposter. Somewhere. I have a question. When sampling weed like this, do you? How long do you want to rest between like trying different strains so you can actually uh, like accurately detect which is which? It depends on your tolerance. And the other thing with good bud, you can always tell the different high. If we smoke another strain. 
will start feeling different. Yeah. Yeah, because I do It'll feel different. Override the effects of the yes. previous. Because I do feel different from the previous one. Yeah. Which was the previous one, by the way? The, the one we did before the recording, before we that started recording. Skywalker OG. Skywalker, Skywalker OG. OG. Yeah. Um, let me just look up Skywalker OG real quick. Sounds like see. something from Sky- California. It makes you walk on the sky. It's like yeah, Jabba. it's an Indica strain as well, mm. just pointing that out. So it's an Indica dominant hybrid, mm-hmm. right? So it, it has a little bit of both. Um, oh. And it has a potent THC content, right? So we already established that THC is the main psychoactive Ingredient in uh, ingredient in marijuana. In, yeah, yeah, or in marijuana. So um, the THC yeah. ranges from about twenty percent to thirty percent of the content. I wanted to be her girlfriend, but Mary didn't wanna. <laughs> she wanna. She wanna. <laughs> so I went to Tijuana because Tia wanted to. <laughs> Can't believe you just cracked yourself up. <laughs> yeah. And so. I, um, so Skywalker OG is a cross between Mazar, some other strain, and Blueberry OG, another strain. The and the dominant oh yeah, there are also chemicals <coughs> called terpenes um, found in 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 g- marijuana or cannabis. And terpenes are just like it's it's almost low key like the tar in in smoke. It's just like an extra thing mm. that's there. Sounds very toxic. But no, no, no. Actually, terpenes can help with a lot of things. Like um, they may help with the euphoria and the relaxation. Some some aspects of the the feelings you get from marijuana are actually caused by non cannabinoid. I have a question. What was this uh, perception when we were growing up that our parents tried to make us believe that people who smoke marijuana are always hyper aggressive and things because. We did the depressant. I'm about really? to get to that in a moment. Actually, I, let me just point out, you know, just before we move on, that Skywalker OG is well known for its relaxing and euphoric mm. effects. Like so let me know when you start to feel the euphoria once we smoke No, but that. Skywalker is the one we smoked first. The one we just had was a Grape Ape. Ah. Yeah, so do you see the difference, though? You notice the difference. Grape Ape relaxed me, though. Mm, my eyes, I've never felt that. Maybe I was a little more euphoric than I might normally be on Skywalker, but I did yeah. feel, I did feel a difference. swift change in relaxation with Grape Ape, and I didn't right. stutter as much. I usually stutter when I'm on weed. It's very strange. There's certain strains of weed that make you feel uh, jittery. Mm. We actually have another strain of weed, don't we? Today, which one? Which one is? It? Did you bring it? No. Oh. Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog Millionaire. We decided to call it Slumdog Millionaire because it's from Kibera, and right. it hits like a slumdog. It bites. Slumdog okay. look like a hyena. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> you had a brain fart? No. Um, brain I just, shark? <laughs> I just saw something really interesting, right? Um, That's what someone says when they see a porn ad. Yeah. So, like, this is the history of marijuana. <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the history of marijuana okay. is pretty interesting. You really, um, you really need to learn about it. Because a lot of people have internalized and inherited a lot of their hate for the drug from, you know, their parents and the society. That's where stigma comes from. Exactly. Um, now, the thing is, with marijuana, it actually, a lot of the propaganda around it began between the 1900s and the 1920s. Sorry, 1900 to 1920. It was Which u- country? It was in America. Mm. Um, it's always been used and smoked in several parts of the world, right? But like, it used to be really popular among um, the black community, in the U.S., mm-hmm. uh, what, both ah. when they were slaves and when they were formerly uh, freed, uh, formerly slaves, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened is, I'm I'm not sure what triggered it, but suddenly the white community started associating marijuana and its with usage with the negative qualities of black people that mm. they thought, you know, like, like it makes you want to rape people, interesting... <laughs> makes wow. you be a criminal and all of that. And a lot of the marketing or like, like, like the propaganda around it was like, don't use it because it's going to make Indeed. you like a nasty Fuck. nigger. Yeah. You get. And that's... There's some parallels to the things that happen in the Bible. Like you'll see Christians saying you shouldn't put tattoos on your body or things like that. But that's because right. tattoos were associated, associated with pagans back in those days. So it's more of like an association. It's like, yeah. Not necessarily because it offends. I don't know, God now, God, another but. thing is marijuana was largely, um, you know, like, like a, a, something that, uh, because I said I don't know what triggered it, but what also helped trigger it, um, the whole um, hate towards marijuana was because Mexican immigrants in mm. the 1900s to, you know, 1920, 
um, introduce recreational use of marijuana leaf. Um, so like after the Mexican Revolution of 1910, Mexican immigrants flooded into the U.S., introducing to American culture the recreational use of marijuana. Now, the drug became associated with the immigrants and the fear and prejudice about the Spanish speaking newcomers became associated with marijuana. Anti-drug campaigners warned against the encroaching marijuana menace and terrible crimes were attributed to marijuana and the Mexicans who used it. Sorry, it wasn't the blacks, it was the Mexicans. Mm. You get it? Yeah, exactly. So that's when the marijuana... It's racism, it's all about racism. Yeah, it it began in racism, right? Because if you think about marijuana, it must have been popularized by Spanish-speaking populations. Mary Jane, basically. Yeah, and this went on through the 1930s. So (laughs) like during the Great Depression, which was a terrible economic time around the world, because it just came on the heels of uh, the First World War. But during the Great Depression, massive unemployment increased public resentment and fear of Mexican immigrants, escalating public and governmental concern about the problem of marijuana. Mm -hmm. This instigated a flurry of research which linked the use of marijuana with violence, crime, and other socially deviant behaviors, primarily committed by racially inferior or Mm -hmm. underclass communities. By 1931, 29 states had outlawed marijuana. So here's the thing. That's coming back to why our parents tried to stigmatize us with that. I mean, to stigmatize the, mar- the use of marijuana. It's because it's been passed down from colonization. It's been passed down mm-hmm. from colonization. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It started with American laws that were really the result of xenophobia, if we're being honest. And then from there... It, of course, spread, you know, because Britain is a big ally of the U.S., it spreads through Britain to Commonwealth countries. And so even today, like when you were growing up, your mother probably told you that people who smoke weed are thugs and they're violent people. So the exact same propaganda they used to associate with, it, uh, associate with it in the 1930s. Here's a deep observation. Uh-huh. Not only did we get colonized completely to the point where we <coughs> utilize English and, and mm-hmm. uh, the, the systems of government, the systems of living, right. but we also inherited their likes and dislikes and their stereotypes and things like that. It's right. quite deep. Like we're completely wiped it's, out. Exactly. Like, you might think about it, you there's only probably thirty percent of you is probably African in terms of like the way you think. A, a lot, lot of, of is, you is, is Western. Colonial. Because like we don't even have a great sense of our own history and culture. Because like do you remember, for example, what Rwandan traditional life was like in eighteen no. twenty? You don't <laughs> no. because there is enough documentation of that history. They've robbed mm. you of your history. But I'm pretty sure you know everything the Europeans were doing right down to what the fuck they were wearing in 1820. It's weird, isn't because it? Because everybody, everywhere you look, that information is being crammed and down the, your throat. And the distinction is that some of the, these uh, colonizers, they went and actually burned down the history. Like, that was completely intentional. We're going to wipe off these people's memory of themselves. Probably going to kill a few people, a few teachers, a few mm-hmm. important people, so that the history is completely wiped out, and we've brainwashed this entire new generation and their children. I think it's a little more to feel inferior. Than that. I, I, I mean, and 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 people are going to say, you know, like I'm, I'm supporting the white man here, but like I think it's a little more complex than that. I think um, there was no single-minded endeavor by the colonialists to wipe out Africans or just like absolutely humiliate them. It, it was really like they were just being opportunists. They saw Africa, they saw wealth, and so they exploited it for its wealth. Like it was like, no, you know, was like no hard feelings, just business. No, that's, there was the exploitation. The and it that, was based off of fear. It was based off of fear because they were, there was no such thing as just business because some of the stuff they did was unnecessary. Why would you burn down libraries? That is not conducive to your whole mission of exploiting the resources. Burning down libraries. didn't burn down libraries. One of them though. did. All of them did. Like, uh, I think the ones who burned down libraries in Egypt were probably the, the Muslim invaders or something like that. The yeah, Arab yeah, it was, like, wasn't colonialist. But, I mean, that's another uh, aspect of colo- colonization. Like, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if it's British or whatever, it's still colonization. In fact, if anything, I, be- I believe the colonials probably built more libraries than ever. But existed. not with African history. That's the thing. The African history bit is sad, admittedly. Exactly, because... But, like, I don't think colonialists also purposely tried to erase... No, but let me, let me just actually... I might as well shut this down, because mm-hmm. here's, here's the thing. You know a lot of the cultural artifacts of Nigeria, where most of them are stored? Mm. In, in the UK. Nigeria actually filed a lawsuit for the UK to return these cultural items because they were taken forcibly mm. during the, the slave trade and everything mm-hmm. like that. So, I mean, there was that intention. Literally, we're going to take away their history... Not, so they have no connection to their roots before we came. So 
the arrival of the white man is kind of like ground zero for humans. Did you see that that egotistical sense of <laughs> I want to completely yeah, take over your like, entire psyche? I want to dominate you so, so hard. There was something intentional about fuck that. Fuck you, you so to, hard. You have to admit there was something intentional about that. I I, I don't know. I, I I I guess I can see where you're coming from. I'm just thinking. You know, the reason why I'm 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 making this argument is I'm not necessarily saying colonialists were angels. What I'm trying to say is there was no grand master plan. It was just a lot of opportunistic people, and collectively, it was a malicious act against Africans. But there was no, like, mastermind behind it saying, like, first we're going to start here, and then here, and then here, and then uniting all the European countries. I'm curious. Just a bunch of European countries, each following their own aims, you know, and being exploitative to the max. I'm like, curious if someone else it. here has anything to say about that. Like, do you have any opinions on that? Any, anything in particular? Yeah. Just give it a, no, uh, I just, I think, I mean, at a certain point, maybe initially it was opportunistic, yeah. and then surely further down the line there had to have been a system. Mm -hmm. Because there was education, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not a specialist in any of this, but I mean, I'm just thinking maybe initially it was opportunistic, but then surely somewhere down the line it was like... Eventually they decided to have some fun, like, let's see how much we can mess up these people. <laughs> <laughs> Gratuitous. <laughs> It's, it's like, like a game. It's like gratuitous. Like, okay, okay we've taken, I, I we've taken mean, their wealth, let's take their culture. I mean, okay, fine. I mean, I defer. So, like, like yeah, maybe you guys are right. Mm. Um, I just, like, I, I, whenever I approach such arguments, I try to take the least passionate line, where it's mm. like, you just, like, consider this strictly logically. The one that's, that's like, farthest the, there's from a, you. There's a popular saying in English, like, N do not ascribe to malice what can simply be explained by stupidity. <laughs> like, a lot of the time, like, oh my God, this person wants nothing but the worst. No, they're just dumb and they made the wrong decision. They didn't mean to. Our government isn't trying to make us suffer. It's just that a lot of dumb people at the helm, they make dumb decisions and we end up poorer tomorrow than we So are while today. we're coming down or experiencing you know? the, the grape ape, uh, we have a few interesting topics to talk about. So we usually touch on a social media So let's subject. talk, actually, you know, what let's talk about um the 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 deputy president talking about how the price of Weed. of herb has risen in central to 400 shillings let me read now. the quote i am so happy that since we started this <coughs> exercise in central kenya mm -hmm. a roll of bang i don't know why it's called bang that was selling at 100 where shillings. did the name bang come from i'm just gonna google that that's right not even now. the feeling of weed <laughs> probably cocaine would be bang weed should be shh or <laughs> but bang is cocaine like bang or alcohol or something like that why would it be called bang with an h anyway so let me re read the quote again i'm so happy that since we started this exercise in Central okay Kent, you're not gonna let believe me finish. this okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> a roll that was so stern, of like a bang child. that was selling at 100 shillings is now going for 400 shillings that is good progress it's becoming unaffordable regarding a shagwa 4th may 2023 go ahead my good sir <laughs> I was going to say, did you know <laughs> that um, the word comes from Hindi, bang, bang, which means narcotic from hemp, and in Sanskrit, it's banga. Oh. Yeah, and... Uh, so it's from Hindi? It's from yeah. Indian, oh, Sanskrit. bang. Yeah. There's so much influence on, on, uh, from India and Kenya. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of influence from a lot of countries in Kenya. You want to take some bang? <laughs> bang, some bang. Banga, banga, Their music banga. is called bangra, isn't it? <laughs> Bangra. This is so wrong. <laughs> this is cultural appropriation. All the women sound like they're applying for a, a job as a house help. Exactly. Did you know, for example, that Pilau, mm -hmm. which is a Swahili Pilau. word, is called Pilau in in Arab. It's called oh, okay. plov in Russian. Mm. Because even pilaf. as far east as the Russians, they still eat pilau and they call it plov. I have a question, guys. Pilaf so, is actually Ukrainian is pilaf. I think it's called pilaf. Ukrainian pilaf. So all these things are influencing different parts of the world. Does Africa have one thing that's like influence influence the, the world in terms of like even if it's a name, something I mean, like that. yeah, we're the cradle of mankind. No, I mean in terms of like things like culture. Like the word like for a mother, dish. mama no. is pretty universal. Yeah, but it's not Swahili, is it? No, but I'm just saying words, it most uh, likely from originated from Africa. Era? When you have a word that's so universal. Okay, hear me out. Hear me. What I'm trying to say is mm -hmm. there's a cultural export. What kind of African cultural exports are there? Because Our there's Pilau. I'm a piano. No, that's like that's very minor. Export. That's like a very niche. Nobody dances on a piano in the US. Let's think something bigger like Pilau. You see, Pilau is generational. What? Yeah. 
he disagrees. Someone in the audience disagrees. Okay, like you I think it's pretty. Sure I once had a, an American friend, and I was like, "Hey, do you listen to Ama Piano?" The first word that came out of his mouth was Maporisa. But think about like, it. They compa- even know the DJ compa- over there. You can know? you compare Ama Piano dances to Pilau, like the cultural export? <laughs> I mean, it's apples and oranges. No, I'm but I'm talking about the, the impact of the cultural export. Like, it's known everywhere as an, as an Asian thing. Or so, whatever. an African thing that's like known sushi. everywhere. Like, for example, sushi. That's just Jazz. a form of food. Or the food. Jazz. Jazz is not African. Jazz is African. Jazz is American. Jazz is African. Jazz no, is American. No, it, it comes from uh, American African slaves. American. African American slaves. But it's not African. That's not the same. No, but... Okay, fine. So... I, I mean, African American slaves came from Africa, so their proto music was originally Africa. It was West African, and then no, but that's like a mishmash. It's a mishmash. Jazz. So, like something un- undisputable, like pilau or let's say sh- sushi is inarguably from Japan, and it's a big cultural Jolof. export. Jollof. Jollof is not the world. It's not known the world of over. Yeah, it's, very close. it's close though. Okay, but this is Jolof this is, is in the realm popular. of food. This is in the realm of food. No, this is in the realm of food though. Like if you think about it. Like I'm t- no no just outside even outside the realm of food because I'm thinking about the concept of like even the genre of Afrobeat is really okay yeah, yeah. that's a good one that's a I, can, I guess that's a good one Afrobeats yeah I guess I should have said that before I'm Afro- a piano I'm a piano right? is very small but <laughs> yeah. yeah but Afrobeats yeah I guess I guess you could say that's the one thing but it's just music okay uh, what's your point that there's the cultural like no, what's I'm, the I, greatest I, cultural impact in the world. And how does the greatest cultural impact from Africa compare to that? Well, that even, that's, that's what we're trying about, to do it's here, not even right? About, no, I was just curious because it was just like a question. I it's more about like mm. the impact of the cultural export. Like, has Africa, have Africans taken things outside of the, the I world? think they have. I think they have taken a lot of stuff, right? So, for example, um, sometimes a cultural export it can, can be manifested as an import of visitors. Mm. And a lot of people from around the world come to Africa... To visit for certain reasons, like they want to watch the local traditional dances, and I know you're gonna okay. say it doesn't okay. have as that's much of an true. impact, but like the amount of tourism we're getting just based on people wanting to watch us dance in skirts, yeah. that's <laughs> exactly like grass skirts, like like that's that's an export. That's what I'm trying to say. It is. You know? Yeah, yeah. This is big enough export that. Black yeah. Well, Black Panther. Yeah. <laughs> Although the sad part about Black Panther is it wasn't produced by Africans, Africans. It was African Americans. <laughs> There's a whole freaking war that I see around this. Like, African Americans, for some weird reason, are not considered African. Okay, I have lived with They that. don't even consider themselves African. Exactly. African-American. I've lived like, with, a, with a couple of black Americans or African Americans. The thing is, for them, they see themselves as descendants of black slaves in the U.S. So they see their ancestors as people who have fought for the land. So they feel entitled to the to land the that they, they built. Yeah. So they feel more entitled to that. It's kind of like, yeah, I mean, Africa is nice, but it's not my home. I didn't bleed for this land and that kind of thing. Ah, uh, yeah. That's why they... It's, it's not in an elitist way where, yeah. which most Africans tend mm. to believe. Although, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it is because, like, all Africans are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they it's say no, about no, us. No, no, we, do, we taught you Europeans how to shower. Exactly. <laughs> we that's did. We actually, actually, shower. showering every day is one of those things that's probably only unique to Africa. And wearing underwear too. I don't know and if you know that. Underwear. Wearing underwear is from like, Mali. Literally, there's a whole bath called a French bath or something. Or it's like, what no, is that's this? just the name. Why did it get the name? But then, yet, oh, the French bath is like applying things. Like this is just my point. Like yeah. they literally have a whole name for how they do not shower, shower enough. <laughs> you know, it's like just wipe yourself. Because underwear, towel. I think, was an invention of Mali or something like that. Like the the wearing of no, it was. It was that Actually, the people in what were they called? Uh, the yeah, I'm trying to find the name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They they're the ones who kind of like went to the to Europe as well. They had this name that started with D or something like that. The Mer- the dicks? No, yeah. there's a word I'm looking for. N double O R. Yeah, the the Noor or yeah, something like noor. that. Yeah, the Noor or something what, like that. What, what, there were like some ruling from? class of, of uh, North Africans uh-huh. back in the time where like people were doing expeditions and they were still black, they weren't Arab. I mean, but you did Who? say start with a D, like you were so off. <laughs> that was up <laughs> Don't judge me, I'm high. Uh, oops. <laughs> you Don't know? judge me, I'm high. Anyway, uh-huh. Well, yeah, so they were ruling class in Europe. Funny mm-hmm. enough, like they, I don't know, I forgot the, the, the whole definition of all this. But then eventually they were also whitewashed in history. So they, it's kind of debated like Egyptians' skin tone or skin color. Mm-hmm. The Noors are debated the same way because they were European royalty and they were dark skin. Wow. Yeah, so there were migrants from the, I think, the northern part of Africa who had like good trading relationships. 
they were like the ru- ruling elite who had migrated and, from there. And yeah, and then they and started like a, their own kind of Chinatown. Oh, wow. Yeah, so how north. did they get wiped out though? No, they didn't get wiped out. I guess some of them... Or they, they just like intermarried themselves out of existence. I would imagine or they migrated somewhere else. Right. Yeah. Wow, that would be interesting to actually verify. All these things are not known because like a lot of African history was, was burnt. Which, well, another which, thing most people don't know is that white slaves were a thing for the longest time. But in which country? In all countries. Hmm. So, for example, um, we used to have white slaves, like, you know, when the Moors who... Yeah, the Moors, went, not the Noors. It was the, M- the Moors, Moors went and conquered... Oh, so those are the ones you said? Yeah. Saying? You could have just asked me. What the fuck? <laughs> no, but we're talking about the whole thing. The Moors. Well, I don't... You said the Noors, and I was like... <laughs> I mean, just out of line to the end. <laughs> no, but, like, I just want to point out that this is even farther from you <laughs> saying it started with a D. <laughs> so... <laughs> You weren't even close. You I'm weren't high. even close. I'm high. <laughs> I love the honesty in that. <laughs> it's almost like a, I surrender. <laughs> like I won't fight anymore, I must admit. <laughs> you know, when you start declaring how high you are, then you know you're high. Which is the opposite yeah. of alcohol. Alcohol, mm-hmm. when you start saying you're not drunk, that's when you know you're drunk. Yeah, it's like, it's, you're okay, you're fine. But Just when you say walk. you're drunk, you're not. I mean, clearly you're not. Oh, you fell? That's totally normal. People Remember, like, the, the, the other time. friend who was here for the recording, he was on the floor doing, like, windmills. After saying, I'm not drunk. <laughs> and he was so laughing funny. to himself. It was so funny <laughs> to watch, by the way. So, anyway, I was saying when the Moors um, took over Spain and you whatnot. The, you mean the Noors? Now yeah, <laughs> back then, because the Arab world was pretty dominant, there was a lot of slave trade. And some slaves, you know, being the, the, the Arabs would actually even get slaves from places like Spain and other uh, countries in, in Europe. And so there were white slaves, like during the time when um, Arabs were the dominant group in, in, in Europe, like when they had conquered a lot of lands. But what happened during um, the beginning of the American slave trade is that when these people started dealing in that, like, triangle... I, I forget the name of the triangle, but it was like... What? There's the U.S., and then there's... Um, the Bermuda? Uh, no, not the Bermuda Triangle. I'm talking about a trade triangle. So it's just like there's a port in the U.S. Okay. where they would be getting to the U.S. I don't know if it's, like, around Florida. Mm-hmm. And then there's, like, some place in West Africa, I forget... And right. then there's like this spot. Is it is it is it Britain or or Spain in um Europe in Europe? So mm. so so settlers would move from Europe. They would go to the U.S. where they would start cotton and sugarcane plantations. And then um, because they have like a lot of shit they're trading from Europe, like the sugarcane, the cotton, and also trinkets and whatever from Europe, they come with it to Mali offer it and then the Malians would, would would provide slaves now the thing is the reason why they went for african slaves is because around this time of course slavery was abolished and 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 in in europe and and of course there were no more moors at the time or whatever mm. right so the only other cheap place they could get slaves was a place in west africa where the, the tribes were already warring against each other and they kept like taking prisoners of war so it was easy to sell your prisoners of war for like gold and 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 guns and shit the, wait, and the wait, guns wait. will help you fight the other tribe better we have gone very very deep in digression where did this come from no, where, where this came from is because you, we were talking about the existence of white slaves and, and, no, and also... But where did that come from? <laughs> like, we were supposed to be talking about something else, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what we're talking about was African-Americans and their history. And we were talking also about, like... Um, Being the... high on Think Shack is kind of like scuba diving. You go too deep, you forget where you were. <laughs> That's, I'm just I'm just trying to recap. I'm, I'm reading yeah, myself the, back the, in with the. I book. mean, I mean, it was just like a whole tangent we went on because, mm. um, you know, we started talking about like how um slaves and 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 um uh, and and the, the the our culture and our history has been stolen through like like wiping out certain peoples that used to exist. Uh, it all you get? started with bang. Yeah, it started with bang. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was deep in thought. I was, uh, damn. You found it. Damn. Yes. <laughs> My ass damn near popped out. Wow. No, that was nice. Because Ramsey was taking me back all the way, bang. but it, was, it all started with bang. That bang, was good. bang, we, Indian. And then it just, <laughs> we just drifted <laughs> off. You know that thing? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. It's like this, building. This in the third. It's like yeah. building a world in Inception. It's like doing exponents. <laughs> 
Like you go to the power, switch to the power, switch to the power, switch, and then you forget where you were. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is Ski was chilling, and then he just got up. He's like, mm, it was bang, and you got it. That was actually right. Back to, some, back to something we also mentioned yeah, about, good about about history. Eh? Why would they burn down our history mm-hmm. to control the masses? Mm, if yeah. they burn down our history, we lose ourselves. Uh, we lose our self or a sense of identity, our culture, you see? True, mm-hmm. true. Then now they form the education system, which is an indoctrination. Yep. Interesting. Really? Yeah. So going back again, like this is kind of like two nil, two nil rams, yeah, because you, this shows that it was clearly intentional. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, if it was intentional, they wouldn't give us the exact same education system as they give their own kids. I mean, education systems are fucked. Yeah, education is trash. You know it. No, yeah, but I'm just saying the education system we had was the same one being used on British kids. I mean, CBC is about chicken. I mean, no, CBC wow. is now. <laughs> but look at the education system we had. You know who started the educational system? Probably some... I, I know the story about some, some war general or something that wanted... To, like, like it was the Prussian system. <laughs> I've really started to doubt this like, story. Like, absolute obedience because they were trying to produce factory workers or something like that. That's that's how it started, right? You said education started from a warlord. No, a war general. A like, war- like, <laughs> like, okay, we're going back to the exponents again. Let's what get back is to a the warlock. Let's get back. It's a wizard. It's a type of wizard. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's a warlock. Why are we digressing? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm trying. I'm trying to realize back no. here. That's what I'm saying. Like, let's leave the warlords trying, alone. No, it's you guys that keep getting lost. Because, like, we you were the one who okay. Keeps lost. He talked about how they wanted to erase our history by the education. No, system. we start. Let's go back to bang. Let's go back to bang. Because <laughs> we're talking about. Us. <laughs> yeah, this is like I keep trying to pull us out of the rabbit hole. We're going to go back in on another canal. <laughs> All right, we have like things. Do the things. So this is this is beautiful um, uh, chaos. Grape ape. Yeah, that's the no. grape ape. <laughs> Guys, look for some grape ape. So that this was what it's you like know the the way ape. this was supposed to start is we're talking about regarding Shagwa even before Bang, <laughs> like even before <laughs> Bang, it was about regarding Shagwa's <laughs> comment because we're like, when is it called Bang? <laughs> I mean, if you didn't know we're high now, you know. <laughs> this is the highest level of digression. But apparently, yeah. on top of that, they want to. They're proposing though, a five percent tax no, no, income. No, 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 wait, wait. Do you think no? <laughs> do you think that Rigadi is right about the increasing prices of things because of you know better regulation? Even his name is not right. If you take his name, <laughs> it's like an anagram of the word right. It's oh. like the the word right. <laughs> if you take right and then you move the you have the Rigadi. a Rigadi. So, so really. He just shows you he's not, he's not right. Honestly, honestly, I don't know where the government is getting its data from, you know? But like... Kashago sounds like an insult. Like, <laughs> you tiny shagger. Kashago, kale kashago. You see a boy, like, I don't like that kid. Kale kashago, come No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's not go too far. We will be hunted down. By who, though? <laughs> yeah. By everyone. He looks like he would hunt you in the forest. <laughs> we have the most aggressive looking faces in the government. Probably the least attractive presidents yeah. you've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, like what I'm trying to say is I don't think I don't think they're getting the right kind of data. Mm. You know, because it is weirdly <laughs> still available, mm. despite claims with the government that there's more regulation. Mm. And now we can move on to the whole thing about tax. Yeah, so the government, on top of like the weed thing, being happy about weed tax increases, increases, fuck. On, they want to put a 5% tax increase on wigs, false beards, artificial nails. I didn't even know false beards were a thing. Who the fuck does that? Like, who just like wears a beard? You must have childhood trauma for you to use a fake beard. You know, a beard is like a man wig. Look, Probably. You know, think like about trans it. Trans women. But how many? Like, for them to add a 5% tax, it means that it's happening a lot. Yeah. Who the fuck is it's buying like, fake you beards? Know how much opportunity there is in false beards? Look at this false beard, false, false, false. That guy over there, false. Yeah? But it does five percent. It does make it, money right It does now. point to an interesting uh, observation because we've just been seeing an increase, uh, an increase in uh, taxes. And the thing is, there's only like three ways to solve the the the, the economy problem that we have. Either they increase the taxation, they increase the the aid that they're borrowing abroad. 
or they cut down on projected spending, which we know is impossible with Kenyan governments. Right. So okay. So here's the thing, right? And we had I, I this was one of the topics um, that was brought up on our, our story today, the Think Shack story, is that which is better? Should a country tax its citizens more? Like, like we have a president who's coming under heat for taxing us heavily. Tax us, right? Ranger. Yeah. Exactly. So, but then was the previous one better? The one who borrowed heavily. Like, because one way or another, we are facing a cash deficit. So I'm going to say something. You suggest I'm going to say something. Since we're talking, we've mentioned it bridge as that. much as a digression. Mm-hmm. Did you know that Uhuru Kenyatta is in the top 10 of the richest presidents in the world? Can you imagine his net worth is 10 times that of Obama? Uhuru Kenyatta. What is his net worth? $400 million or something like that. About wow. $450 million. That's and Uhuru that's Kenyatta. probably only the reported shit. He's probably yeah, worth it's probably 10 worth times more. Billions. Wait, wait, what did I say? $450 million. It's probably worth a billion dollars. You never know. Or more. Yeah. Like it's, uh, it's all those things. But now here's my question, yeah? Would you prefer taxing to borrowing or borrowing to taxing? I don't know if prefer, you were... Uh, Trying to improve the economy. It's a lesser of two evils, but I think I prefer taxing because borrowing is like a kind of worms. Well, then in that case, isn't the current president just doing the right thing? It's unfortunate, but he is. But there's also some things which are just silly, like ta- uh, taxes on wigs. That's comical. It's almost like <laughs> there's a meme department in the government. They're yeah. like, let's do something outrageous. To get the them funny thing about. is when <laughs> they start like campaigning against the tax on wigs, it'll mostly be um, older, richer men campaigning. Here's a conspiracy. Because they're the sugar daddies that pay for the wigs the women buy anyway. <laughs> here's a like, conspiracy. Like, no, you cannot tax this shit. We're the ones that buy it. No, but here's a no conspiracy. woman is going to be campaigning here's, against that. Here's a that. conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. You know a lot of politicians have interest in uh, a lot of business interests outside of politics. Yeah. They find some cell vibrators for God knows what reason. So yeah. it might be, this is a big conspiracy theory, it might be that one politician has beef with another and they know that other politician has interest in the wigs. In the wigs, like, yeah, so... Like, they're literally having a battlefield in Kenya, like, right in front of Kenyans. Like, they have that much power. I mean, technically, the taxation is... Um, no, really, that's a really crazy thought because you that's can be farther from the truth. Yeah. No, the thing is, <laughs> the five percent tax I'm is part of the proposed the budget for the next year. So it's the. But Minister why wigs specifically? Wigs of all things, wigs specifically. Because there's a lot of wigs being sold. Women buy a lot of wigs. Cosmetics sell. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> I think this is probably where we end it. No. <laughs> Well, I mean, there was, we're supposed to talk about celebrities, so we haven't done that in a minute. And they usually sometimes do pretty well. So, Mustafa. A lot of people don't know this is pronounced Colonel. But in Kenya, they call him Colonel. Colonel Mustafa. He calls himself. He called him Colonel Mustafa. And also, it's not Lieutenant, it's Lieutenant. No, that's in British. Well, American we English is British, Lieutenant. Former, former British they, we used to be, we're no longer a slave to fear. We're a Commonwealth <laughs> country. <laughs> no longer. Well, actually, that's the thing. You know, it's like the, the same way that um, Americans say apartments and Brits say flats. Kenyans say apartments all the yeah. time, but technically they should be saying flats. You know, I'm, 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 a former British I'm in such a conundrum because I don't know if I should say Colonel Mustafa or that way sounds stupid. Okay, let me just not be pretentious. Colonel Mustafa. God. Colonel Mustafa. I feel like showering after doing. <laughs> Colonel <laughs> Mustafa was yeah. uh, spotted. He went trending because of uh, like because he was, his mother. Um, uh, well, he was working what's at his a mother, bro? Site. But then he later said his mother had cancer, so he was trying to raise. But um, what is the correlation, though? And, and I'm, I'm looking. That's the real story, but. Your mother having cancer doesn't mean you have to go work at a construction site. It's kind of like the guy who took a job and then he decided to push him kukuteni. Mm. Like, what if talent is being exploited? In what sense? And talent doesn't pay. It's who cuts the checks. I mean, mm. it's for the it's artists. Likely true. Yeah. The label. You feel me? It's the label, of course. Yeah. It's always been the label. Yes. Because, like, for example, if you make an album, album sales... Um, it, the 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 label company takes a cut of every single thing you sell yeah. and every other artist in this label, so it makes the most money at the end of the day. Mm. Um, a lot of artists are also shit money managers, <laughs> you know, yeah. because once the fame rolls in and the money rolls in, they um, you know uh, burn bright and fast mm. and and piss their money away. Same and, thing with athletes. Same thing with athletes, you know. How many footballers? Um, both American and European, do you know who fucking went broke at some point? So many. Because I think a typical NFL career is three years long. So imagine you're going to make probably like, if you're doing good, probably like, I don't know, $40 million in your career or something like that. Right. But then most of them end up bankrupt. or end up from like, the management side, poor financial advice. Poor know? financial advice. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't but think then, a lot of Kenyan musicians like Mr. Colonel Mustafa, they didn't <laughs> they didn't have they don't have financial manager. They don't. Cuz I know this guy made some money back in the I day. I know and he was pretty famous back when Nairobi Diaries was a thing cuz he did star in it. He became famous for the name he gave to his member. He would call it his Lipunda. What the hell? <laughs> Sounds wrong. As you know, like Sounds shady. Punda is like a donkey, and a donkey is a really large dick. So it's oh. like a lipunda, like like wow. in Swahili, it's like a huge donkey. It's a bit even, too... uh, Mustafa comes from way back, even early two thousand. Yeah, 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 um, it's it's a delicate topic to be sure because right now I know a lot of people have come forward trying to help him raise funds and all of that so he can take his mother to hospital and and get. He's a putting on a mosh basically. That's the thing. I would not want to say that without knowing it for sure because, like, I'm at the moment. Um, some people think that he is seeking pity online, and other people mm. think that it's a genuine case because literally. Um, and arguably, Mustafa did not try to publicize it. Yeah, so someone just like killed. randomly spied on him, mm. took a picture, and then you know it became a thing when they shared it with Edgar O'Byrie because this started literally on Edgar O'Byrie. But I have know, a question though, like if you, if you talk to people like Uber drivers or people who have like really started from the bottom, people who live in Kenya, you realize it's it's almost as if there's no qualification to be a Mjengo guy. Like it's like how low can you go? I like can do Mjengo. I mean, it's the easiest job, and by easy, I don't mean it's the simplest job. So people it's, are building it, houses. By simple, I don't mean easy. And here's like, the interesting thing: it's always available. Get it, but it's always available. The job saturation is high, but so is the job availability. It's a weird thing. Yeah. There's always um, Mjengo jobs available, and how many houses have been constructed? Who are these houses for? It will make you believe there's like houses for people, rich people building houses every day because there's always a Mjengo job. It's like mm. an unlimited resource. Think about it. Mm. It's, really it's, a, it's a whole other topic because also, you know, like construction in Kenya, the rate at which it's growing, of course, it's being funded by corruption money. So that's like mm. a whole other topic to dive into. And, and housing prices will always go up despite the fact that most Kenyans actually rent and not a lot of people are buying houses. It's because when people steal money from the government, one of the best places to put it is in actual like, like land or property. So, I just want to point out, we're going to pause this for a second so we can roll the second. I feel like the other one is coming down. So, I just, want to, I just want to point out, we did not have the Skywalker first because the Skywalker is in my hand right now and it's not been taken yet. Wow, we are so So, high. what did we have at first? We need a coaching from, uh, from, from home, eh? Yeah. All right, yeah. so we're actually going to try the Skywalker now. I'm going to pause Where this. Where did the word cocktail come from? Uh, the tail of a young cock in Spain. <laughs> Coco Rico. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pausing this so we can roll the, the next one and then review it and then we're done. That's uh, no, yeah. So it, we're back so now. We're really in the process it. of rolling um, OG Skywalker. Yeah. Skywalker OG. Skywalker OG. Yeah. I'm yeah. Learning yeah. How we're rolling to um, sawdust to simulate Skywalker OG. What are these things called? Saying. What is this thing called? <laughs> grinder. Okay. It's a grinder. It so just it makes it it's a kitchen, softer. Is it a kitchen tool or is it made no. specifically for this? This. Yeah. So this is what you make, do, right? Yeah, it makes it. Yeah. And then you pour it up. It's yeah. really interesting. It makes it much smoother, finer. Oh, it's from Amsterdam as well. I, I love these things. Just uh, Future Roller. Dutch Rolling Company. It's yeah. from uh, Amsterdam. Mm. Amsterdam. Weed is legal in Amsterdam. Very legal. So legal, they right. literally have weed shops on the streets. All right. From here, what do I do? I want to learn how to do this shit. Mm -hmm. Make a filter. Okay. So how do you do that? You just like roll it around? Yeah. Do you follow the natural groove? Do you make an M? Oh. What? An M? Yeah. How the hell? So that you don't smoke the residue. Mm -hmm. How do you make an M? Well, Show me just you one. trace it out, I guess, into the letter oh. M. Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> I was wondering. Yeah. So you make a few M's and then you roll. Yeah, M and M's. Okay. Did you know this? Hmm? Did you know this? No, I I just made up the M and M joke. No, I'm just, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I I'm your guess is as good as mine about yeah. all of this. Are you learning anything new? No. Really. So there are two uh, two types of rolling. Mm -hmm. One, people who roll with filters. The other, 
people who don't really do anything. Could you explain yeah. the difference it's, between... Uh, it's like the difference between people who use a condom and people who don't. <laughs> you just have to go there. <laughs> the method you use to rule this is called the flag method, where you use a note. Mm, yeah. Oh, I've seen that yeah. one. That's I've one seen that one yeah. as well. You know that? That's the one you use? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Some esoteric things you use. No, like, the flag method I doesn't have the, a filter, so... I use the drunk, uses filters, I use the right? drunk monkey kung fu. Yeah. It's like, oh, this okay. is uh, yeah, Drunken so, Master. Yeah. So after this, I do what? I put the filter. Horny chicken kung fu. Make sure the space you leave. In the middle? You need to be able to, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inhale oh. and exhale through it. Because it's so cheaper. Right hand. <laughs> right hand. It's faster. Where was the gum should face, face you. Like this? Yeah. Okay, and then? What do I do? I just put the. I make it like this. Mm hmm. So. Then pour it in okay. and create a mold. Like this with the hands, right? Yeah. Like salt bait. Weed bait. I would rather you keep mm. holding on to the filter. And then pour with my left hand? Yes. Okay. He would rather. Yeah, but it's not, it's not like that. Yeah, thanks, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather you didn't I'm do that. I'm writing to address this issue. <laughs> I would rather. I have been hearing you at night. I wouldn't Rolling do that if right I were you. I would rather you roll with your left, mm. my good sir. And then, is this enough? How do I would you... like to disabuse you of that notion. <laughs> disabuse sounds like I abused you once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you and now I want to reverse to the, the effects, you know? Okay. I would like to disabuse you like Bill Cosby. <laughs> Bill Cosby probably abused too many people to disabuse. <laughs> Uh, rolling it, no amount of disabusing could undo what such a what long did. process, man. This is some esoteric thing. Yeah. Like, they see this me is actually why I've never been so keen on learning how to. Because I'm like, bro, this is a whole gardening session or something. I don't even know. It's botany. Mm. Botanical science. Like, by the time I'm making all this arts and crafts mess, I'm just like, I'm a rule of blood. Even if I get sticks inside, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to buy them for like, um, to do. Is that balance? But then, like, what's the importance of rolling your weed? Is that balance? That, that, and that's, that's yeah, the question we were supposed us. to ask. Ah, because you need to know what's inside your weed. What might be inside mm. the weed, if you tell Sticks and seeds. The guy is trying And to sometimes make tobacco, too. Mm -hmm. But I've heard worse things. I've heard, like, so once I'm here, I... Tilt it up. I've heard, like... Uh, you can never lace with anything expensive. You like always lace with something cheap. And then after this? Because it makes the product more expensive. If... Say, example, you buy weed and I lace it with cocaine. Bring it closer. Bring I'm the mic, 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 mic. Yeah. I'm taking the loss. Yeah. I'm taking the loss. So you need to lace the substance with... Something uh, cheaper. Uh, something cheaper. I think that's Do a... Do they ever lace it with tobacco? Hey, tobacco is also expensive and depending on how cheap your plug is. Because mm. clearly they don't care about the consumer. I think that's a good one, good enough one. They just roll it with shake and a bit of bud. That's mm. what you get. That's why you usually hear a funny smell at times. You might be smoking, you hear a seed pop, or it starts smelling. Wow. Terrible. Mm. Not even a tifani, it smells bad. Like, like really bad. Mm. Zima zim yokitu bad. Mm. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So what is shake exactly? And where does shake, the come from? Shake. Uh, basically, the leaves from a bud. If you look at uh, the herb mm -hmm. itself, it has leaves. Mm -hmm. And what we smoke is like the fruit of that plant. Mm -hmm. So the leaves usually dry with their nugs at times, mm -hmm. depending with the farmer and how it was groomed. Right. So if they left a lot of leaves, mm -hmm. that is what we call shake. Because they're going to crumble... It and, looks and like really fine. Indistinguishable from the other. Wood. Yes, yes. Right. So, so you're basically it? smoking the the leaves leaf, of the plant. Yeah, not the not the fruit. Wow. And that's why. So once we're here, what do we do? do and if you ever get headaches, it's because you're smoking seeds. Mm. Seeds and a lot of leaves. That's what gives someone a headache. I thought it's once you ha you start having crazy ideas. Bro, you get to ambegu, boy. No, man. To ambegu. Do this. But you start saying shit like, um, mchanga ni iskari, li drop out. 
You know what's funny? There was a time before before the cannabis culture grew, mm-hmm. people used to smoke bush. Right. And, and what's bush the, again? The theory. It's George Bush. Bush is like really low quality. Uh, Reggie Miller, like Reggie. Yeah. Bush okay. is Reggie. You okay. don't need to take care of it. It's just, it's just the very it's low THC. Just, oh, it's the weed. It's the, it's, mm. it's an actual weed. It's yes. Like, this weed coincidentally grew here. Uh-huh. That's the type of weed you, you, you can even smoke thirty to forty by yourself and not and get high. You don't get to that point. Where yeah. You, you know, you're chasing a high. Yeah. So that's the really low, 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 low quality. Yeah. Wow. That's the one in the streets. Right? That's the one in the streets. <laughs> Most everyone like that's gone through like a stone journey. Mm-hmm. That's mostly what they start with. Bush. The bush, yeah. Mostly. Yeah, that's true. There's a few people who be like introduced straight from the back, but niggas are like, mm-hmm. like Yeah. <laughs> Shit, that's being high. You can have the mic. No, but like he was saying something pretty important. It's like, probably the worst rolled blunt you'll ever but see. It looks like a girl's leg in lingerie. <laughs> it's like oh, a cool. see-through <laughs> panty. Because it's supposed to like. Keep mm. pressing on the filter part. Mm. But you've got this, man. I'll try again. Mm. Next time it'll look less like a stocking and more like a thong. <laughs> like, very tight. I feel like it's kind of weird that you just, like, burn all of it up like incense and just yeah. breathe it in. It's <laughs> like, it's not going to be easy to smoke. Keep this part. And then go jump in the ocean. And try and make this part tighter. Okay. Otherwise the smoke will escape. So there's a common misconception about weed mm-hmm. back in the day when people used to smoke bush. Mm-hmm. When it pops, Sandy Ozako is a Mexica. Yeah, it keep pop to if you are, you don't get high as hell. That's a Mexica. Maybe that's what the plants used to say to like. No, guys. Okay, it's a pop to as a Mexica. Okay, it's a pop to do your sasa. I'm going to sit around the corner. Me, they're just there like, like, you know, I'm going to sit as a Mexica. You're like, go to the dog, go to the dog. Then after this is when Shash, Shash came into the market. Shash what is Shash exactly? Is it from Ethiopia? Uh, okay, what people don't know, Shash, Kobash. From my. Yeah, I told him. Yeah, bro, damn. Son. You remember him? You just I recognized know. him? God. What the no, fuck? I don't. I, don't I, I find it rude to. He's been here like, for like over an hour. Look, look at people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But I told you, uh, I told him he, like 2013, and he was like, I might have. <laughs> like, of course, I know he's had many. Yeah. yeah. This guy is the OG. So what is Shash? So Shash, Shash is sativa. Mm-hmm. And from my understanding now of marijuana is, it might be a sativa dominant hybrid. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Lots of people didn't know, probably didn't know the name and just gave it the Shashamani name. Oh, oh right. Shashamani is a region, right? In Ethiopia, yeah. in Ethiopia, it yeah. might be, yeah, 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 yeah. But that uh, that is a more sativa strain. Sativa strain, yeah. Right. Sativa okay. Strain. So a lot of what we have around is indica. Bush, bush was indica. Bush was more indica. It right. Was brown and thick. Right. And it had thick buds. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So that's quite interesting. Yeah. So this is Skywalker. Where so are we gonna smoke your badly rolled blunt? It's gone from looking like a like a long, like a lingerie stocking to looking like a wet sock. It looks like a sad story, if I'm being yeah, honest. It does look. <laughs> <laughs> like this, this started all out really oh, hopeful. Another thing, how you <laughs> roll also determines the flavor, uh-huh. how the weed tastes. <laughs> Mine looks like it's gonna yeah. taste like a wet sock. That's why, that's why two or three people can hold the same strain, but yeah. they all taste different. Yeah. Yeah, depending on the size of the film. It's probably the, the a way the to smoke. carry over that analogy. <laughs> Skywalker to... is walking on my throat. She got a throat walker. Yeah. <laughs> I tried the trick of blowing it up, but no. Mm? I still choked. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, the thing is burning so sadly. Don't yes. hold it. <laughs> it's pathetic. Don't hold the smoke in. Okay, just. Yeah. That's why. It's pathetic. Just make fun of my first pancake. Like, oh my god. <laughs> It is so withered. I, I, I pity it. Like, just die. Already. Well, smoking it is gonna help you out. Just die already. You, you, you've gone through enough. Misery. In all fairness, it's smooth. Mm-hmm. It's good. It burns pathetically, but it's smooth. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that makes you feel better, yeah. it makes you feel better. Sure. Mm-hmm. sure. So Skywalker probably. I wonder what is it supposed to make you feel like. Skywalker. I mean, obviously, yeah. yeah. Skywalker is an indica, indica dominant plant. Yeah. I feel it in my toes. So relaxation. Mm-hmm. I was. Uh, if you have depression, PTSD, this is what you wanna smoke if your boyfriend has left you or vice yeah. versa. Yeah, Bing yeah. Bang. For for me, I always go for where I feel it. Like this one, I'm starting to feel it in the legs as well, in the feet. It's weird. You feel a weird tingling. In the, exactly, it's weird. Somewhere in the feet. Yeah. So there is a different feeling from weed. Yep, there is. Mm. And from every strain, you can tell. If you smoke really good quality and mm-hmm. you smoke shit quality, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all the uh, good high goes away. Now you have this medium, low quality high. Yeah. So what you can do to compensate, smoke higher quality bud and you can continue. Mm. Yeah. This wine was shit. Finding high quality bud though is really difficult in Kenya because like a lot of the stuff on the streets is um you know like bush. like bush like you said so like like it all boils down to how good is your plug and i don't know like plug hunting is one of the most difficult things because of the nature of the business Ski, how would you recommend finding a good plug plugs don't want to be found no, but how would you recommend finding a good plug and uh, what's your take on gatekeeping plugs mm. what do you smoke with what do you smoke with Mm. Yeah. Mm. Or just what do you smoke with because they might get your, uh, your plugs number and rat your plug out mm. yeah, once they get caught oh yeah. Yeah. right so the police might actually have the tactics out to like catch the consumer Experience so they can get caught mm. right amateurs do okay because right. you have that smoking etiquette you know you can't smoke in front of kids you know you can't smoke in some boy your neighbors mm. you know but for people who are new to smoking with the rebellious spirit, they're like, ah, in your mauru, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's what gives it that negative connotation, you know? Yeah, now, exactly. Clearly. Clearly, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. You know, so yeah. And then it becomes a whole thing. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. Look at my fake blunt strength, hard to survive. <laughs> It's like, Daddy, I'm doing my best. <laughs> you took me to college, but I'm failing you. It's almost like it still burns, though. I mean, it yeah, still burns. Before yourself, would smoke this. Ah. What <laughs> mean? I don't know if that's a compliment or a backhanded one. It's like, a if, we're in a, if we're in a <laughs> cell, a yeah, thanks. In a cell, yes, we'll still smoke it. If you're left dependent on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I was. It would be a very like, interesting situation if your life ever depended on weed. In police cells, <laughs> mm. like, they can and they do. What the fuck? Guys buy cigarettes and cells. Yeah, but, but they, they bring it to their weed, asses. Though, I mean, it's literally the belly of the beast. Like the they bring guy. it to their asses. Like, oh. I heard some weed gets through the border through someone's ass. Mm. I don't know. This is going to change how I, <laughs> how willing I am the news. to put weed the in news. my mouth from I mean, they do what's the called body packing. Like, the news are just like, yo, guys, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> some people <laughs> transport they weed call it body. They, no, they call it body packing. Like, this woman was found with like a bundle of weed up her ass, like tied up in some plastic and Vaseline. Like it's the weirdest combination. Like how did it get up there? <laughs> you don't want to imagine. But it's called body packing. That's one thing that happened. That's why there's body a packing. thing at the airport called a cavity search. When they, the dogs are on you, but they right. don't know what's, what they're smelling because they're not on the luggage, they're on you. And it's not on your shoes. It's not sewed into your, sewed into your clothes. Then they're going to do what's called a cavity search where they're going to spread your cheeks and try and find stuff that you may have. Stuffed yeah. up to your ass, yeah. But how can they see? Uh, unless I mean, they're like, like putting like a colonoscopy it's like type a, it's thing. Exactly. Or it's like, a, what's this male procedure called? It's actually a colonoscopy. Yeah. yeah so the doctor will put their... So they oh, it's like a prostate it. exam. They'll put yeah. their finger up your ass. Just feel around. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine, you know. that's the shit we're putting in our system right now. 
I it's mean, too now, late to apologize. But we just rolled it. I mean, did they body pack the filter and the paper? We, <laughs> no, they didn't. Another reason why you should roll your own weed is because you don't know the weed that you got that has been pre-rolled, where it's been, and it might have been up someone's ass. Yeah. So that's a very good reason to roll your own weed. Yeah. So I believe this is the last train. We're going to have a few passes and then see, because this is about to, we're about to wrap up the episode. I Can think we should it? wrap up the episode yeah. because we are all so high. Mm, we're high and mighty. So <laughs> thanks for joining us on this episode. It's been a very interesting interesting foray into the yeah we had a lot of fun it was a bit slower than the other episodes but i hope you enjoyed all the knowledge bombs and uh thanks for our guests uh, ski and co for coming through and the audience of course and uh stay tuned we hope yeah. you'll enjoy this one have a good one this is jean this is ramsey and this has and been this thick shack. Herb shack. <laughs> the herb shack have a good one guys cheers yeah